Uh, hi everyone, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Rachel Nawetime, and uh, for a couple of months, we are going to be doing a series on human trafficking. Uh, human trafficking is something that has been happening. It is, it is something that you know might still happen if at all we do not come out to handle it. So here with me, I have an amazing lady. Uh, she's going to take us through. Yeah, she's going to give us an insight of what human trafficking is. She can tell us everything that rotates around human trafficking. So I'm excited. And yeah, I think I would first of all give her a chance to introduce herself such that we know who we are interacting with. Okay. How about you? Thank you very much, Rachel, for having me here today. Uh, my mm -hmm. name is Shalin Kawajongu, and mm -hmm. I work with an organization, an NGO known as Willow International, located mm -hmm. in Sambia. <clears throat> and we work to support victims of human trafficking within Uganda and East African region. I work as a prevention and communications officer, and I'm very, very excited to be here today. First and foremost, before I go any further, I would like to appreciate the MOVE Network for giving me this opportunity, this platform to come and share much more of what Willow International does and how we support victims of trafficking in persons and what exactly trafficking in person looks like. Uh, January is marked as the as the Global Human Trafficking Awareness Month, particularly in the US, but it's something that we pick on to yeah. uh, because these mm -hmm. discussions are very important within our communities. So yeah. what better way to end the month of January than to have uh, this candid conversation on an issue that affects uh, many of us within this country? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm very aware that um, this platform is particularly uh, popular amongst the youth and mm -hmm. the youth are quite the target when it comes to this yeah. issue that we're going to discuss. And yeah. I think this is a very good time at the start of the year um, to have a chat about human trafficking and what exactly looks like, how we can protect ourselves, what are the things to watch out for um, yeah. within our communities and how we can safeguard ourselves. Secondly, wow. we need to know that we need to know that human trafficking is actually a global issue. So um, with that being said, we, we all need to, to make an effort and learn more about it. Yeah. So I'm excited to be here. I'm very excited uh, to have this chat with you, Rachel. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so very much, Charlene. So uh, I would want us to break now the conversation down. Mm. I would want you uh, to, you know, help our viewers understand human trafficking. Mm. I know many people have heard about it. I know some of, you know, had it just in rumors that human trafficking happens, but they do not know it. Yet this mm. is the issue mm. that affects us the most. Remember, it affects the youth, it affects the, the men, it affects children, it yeah. affects uh, women. So I, I feel like maybe make the viewers understand what really human trafficking is such mm. that when they come across that at least they have an idea of what human trafficking is mm. yeah okay thank you very much rachel um i've been given something like 30 minutes to talk about human trafficking and to be honest uh, that's not enough time uh, because we're looking at a, a very big issue a global issue and it has quite a number of concepts mm. And um, but we'll try our best to, to utilize this um, this few minutes. One thing we yeah. need to know off right from the start is uh, human trafficking, uh, which is also known as trafficking in persons, is the second most lucrative um, international crime out there, mm. right after drug trafficking, and mm -hmm. that shows you how how big this an issue is. Um, it's something that has been happening over the years, and but I'm very excited because 
um, within the past couple of months or so, there's been a lot of media coverage about um, stories of um, survivors of trafficking, trying to advocate to ensure that other people out there within the community remain safe. So I will just share something with starters. You will let me know if you can see this. Okay. I'd just like to share my screen. Can you see my screen properly? Okay. Yes, I can. Mm, okay. Um, I'll just start with a bit of um, um, some brief ups of uh, what our organization does. Ever Free, mm -hmm. uh, Willow International. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned already, my name is uh, Shalene Kavajungu. Mm. And yes, uh, just to dive right into it, um, Willow International, um, also known as Everfree globally, we are a nonprofit on a mission uh, to free communities from human trafficking and to empower survivors yeah. everywhere yeah. to thrive yeah. in freedom. Mm -hmm. um, like I touched a bit on this earlier, uh, we focus on supporting victims of trafficking. And there are many yeah. services that we offer as an organization, but our overall aim is to ensure that the survivors that have been supported by our organization yeah. are able to, to come out from whatever they've experienced, to be great contributors to the community, yeah. something that was ripped away from them through the exploitation yeah. that they experienced. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's something that we um, are about. I'm having challenges. Okay. okay, great. Um, what do we do? Um, we provide aftercare services uh, for victims of trafficking in persons, for example, um, medical support, um, the sheltering, counseling, uh, economic empowerment through skills building, and so on, to ensure that the survivor gets into a better condition than they came. We also yeah. offer uh, education opportunities. Um, to empower communities, for example, we are having an opportunity to learn something from um, from an education opportunity such as this, and to teach mm -hmm. them about human trafficking, to ensure that they are more informed and are able to make um, better decisions. And also yeah. as an organization, we advocate for strengthening of criminal justice systems, and this mm -hmm. involves engaging with police, uh, state prosecutors, on how to support survivors attain justice on trauma-informed care, um, where to refer uh, survivors when they have come into contact with them, because these are key people within the community. The first place you report a case of uh, trafficking is a police. So how can they possibly, as police officers, support these um, survivors of trafficking attain justice? So those are some of the things that um, we do. So um, yeah. just to dive right in, uh, human trafficking 101. What do we understand from human trafficking? Well, human trafficking is also known as kukusa. And uh, human trafficking in simple terms is the trading of human beings with an aim yeah. of commercial benefits. Yeah, in yeah. that when someone has money, they are able to attain a human being and able to get to get them to do whatever work that they want them to do. And it involves yeah. exploiting of um, men, women, children. If you see, no one is no category is left out. It, it involves yeah. um, exploiting these people by means of force, violence, um, use of tricks, and threats to ensure that these people accept to do that illegal work, that work that is not supposed to be done by human beings yeah we'll get into yeah. the details of what that illegal work looks like um what are yeah. some of the facts when we look at uh, human trafficking who is involved there has to be a victim and there has to be a trafficker um we've seen a, for example um if someone is trying to take yeah. um children from karamoja region and bring them to kampala in the city to beg that person trying to get yeah. them from the villages who we call a trafficker and these children yeah. that they're bringing to Kampala to beg are those that we call victims, yeah. Mm -hmm. So also we need to know that this is a human rights violation and it particularly affects the right to freedom. Um, yeah. We all have human rights uh, when we're born. 
Uh, but mm. when we look at human trafficking, it restricts someone from having their freedom in that they are confined and they can't live their free life because their life sort of belongs to someone else who has bought them. Yeah. yeah. Then um, we need to know that women are more trafficked than men. Uh, mm. We've seen staggering statistics. Um, it's known according to the International Labor Organization. Um, we've come to learn that women are more trafficked than men. Uh, up to 70% mm. of women end up being trafficked. And that's due to many reasons. Uh, women are the, many times they are the caretakers within the community. They are usually the target because they are vulnerable in many ways. Mm. And recently we've seen a rise in exploitation of children, mm. children particularly. During the lockdown, we yeah. had so many of those stories on radio. We watched them on TV. Of uh, the, the statistics of how many children were expecting as a result of, you know, after the lockdown and so on. Mm. So, yeah, that's another <coughs> that is of what's happening then human trafficking happens in every country um there are over 50 million people in the world who are estimated to be in situations of trafficking and also we need to know that there is external and internal trafficking um this this oh, basically yeah. means external trafficking is where someone is moved out of their country they cross the border yeah. maybe someone is moved from uh from kampala and they're taken to nairobi that is what we call external trafficking but then we also have internal trafficking whereby someone is moved from Kitogum and taken to Jinja and they're exploited so we have that is what we call internal trafficking and we need to know that internal trafficking is happening way way more than what we've been watching on tv about the external trafficking you know many of these stories of people stuck in Oman Dubai and so on but we need to know that the, the cases of what's happening within the country are way higher than what is um, happening out there with external trafficking. Um, so these are some of the statistics, 15 million people um, globally, 70% of the people trafficked are women and girls. One in four victims is usually a child. So that shows you also how much children are exploited. And many times, you know, the children are in our community. We have no idea what's happening, but because they're children, they, they usually keep quiet. And um, to date, less than 1% of the survivors receive the care that they need to thrive into freedom. Um, as much as we are working towards um, ensuring that we support victims of trafficking, we've come to learn that it's only 1% of the victims that are out there that we're able to support, which goes on to show you that the remaining 99% are not able to access some of the support services that we give as an organization they are not able to receive the justice that they, they they so desperately want and yeah that goes to show you that there's a big issue within within our country and within the region as an east african region there's a big issue and this is something that needs to be a point of concern for us as citizens so um i'll quickly jump to the forms of human trafficking what are the different forms of human trafficking that we have? So I'll quickly run through them. We have forced labor, as you can see from the pictures. Uh, these are children who are supposed to be at school, but um, in some way they end up um, uh, doing manual labor. Um, one of them is mining, the other one is carrying vegetables. And um, yeah, this is um, tragic, but we know that this is something that is happening. You pass the market and the kids who are supposed to be in school are working. So this is an example. Then we also have forced um, commercial sex, which is of wetunda. Um, this is where we've seen um, young women, not only women actually, with also young men and boys being exploited um, sexually. We have a rise of what we call pedophiles and I think it's a very good time to have a conversation about pedophiles. There's a striking rise of pedophiles within um, within our country, within around the globe, because um, these are people who who are strangely attracted sexually to young children below 18. And um, during the lockdown, because uh, people had more access to internet and you know, social media, we also saw a rise of traffickers trying to recruit uh, more children. Uh, they're trying to recruit more youth. 
um, with um, with different offers, uh, money and so on, um, with an aim of exploiting them. Then also we've had, um, we have an example of child marriage, whereby uh, children are supposed to be in school, but they end up being married off to um, to older people. Uh, for example, in communities, the Busoga region, uh, which is very common for, for a child when she reaches the age of 14, she's ready for marriage. Then we also have uh, forced criminality, where we have um, thieves, um, beggars. These are people who are recruited to, to do illegal work, like I said. Someone is recruited to be a beggar. Um, they, lo they look for young children, maybe in villages where they've not had an opportunity to go to school, or they have no opportunity to, have a, to afford a meal the next day. And these are the people that they particularly target the vulnerable population to come and beg and get money at the end of it all the money goes to the trafficker and this child remains in the same poor condition that they came to um to, to beg in we have domestic servitude this is quite a common one uh, maids are being exploited in homes they are overworked they are over um over drained because they're given a lot of work and also we have um human sacrifice Yes, this is a common one um, within Uganda, uh, whereby when it comes to times for elections, I mean, children disappear in villages for purposes of what? Human sacrifice to get blessings, to get um, favors, mikisa and so on, funny things that go on. So this is a very common thing within, um, within our country. We also have online sexual exploitation. Um, this is um, where unsuspecting people are recruited into having sex online. Um, there's also an interesting topic known as sex extortion. And this is where traffickers ask, they usually target children. They ask them to send naked pictures of them because they love them and they want to send them money. And in exchange of that, they send their pictures. And these same pictures are used to, to, to have them, to, to pressure them into accepting what the trafficker wants. For example, a trafficker can say, okay, you sent me a naked picture of yourself. I'm going to send it to your family. If you don't, if you don't allow me to, to maybe sleep with you. And these kids give in because um, they're not aware of the fact that they're being exploited. Then we have also organ removal and theft. Um, this is also on the rise where we've seen quite a number of, um, of youth who have planned to go to find work opportunities and they end up being exploited. Um, they end up maybe, they say they have COVID, they have a sickness and they're taken to hospital and their organs are harvested, particularly the liver, the kidneys, those are hot on the market. And they're left to either die or to, they're just brought back in a poor state. Um, then also we have child soldiers, uh, children who are recruited to um, to fighting rebel groups and so on. Um, we also have forced surrogacy, um, which is also on the rise. We also have the bondage. Many people wonder why, um, why these people who are, let's say in a trafficking situation, why don't they run away? Why can't they just run out of the house? Um, but there's this issue that we call the bondage and that bondage involves the trafficker um telling the victim that you have to pay a certain amount of money before i release you uh for example those who the victims who end up going to let's say thailand and they think they they were called to do work they were told they were going to work in a supermarket and upon reaching there they discover that this is not a supermarket job instead it is a prostitution job on the on the, on the streets so in a way to ensure that this first the, the victim doesn't run away uh, the trafficker can easily say, I put uh, 10 million to ensure that you come here to Thailand. So you first have to pay me 10 million before you, I can allow you to go anywhere. So because this is someone who doesn't know anything about exploitation, they are forced to accepting because they want to survive. Um, it's expensive to live in Thailand. But when someone threatens to throw you away, throw you out of their house so that you can depend on your own, then they would rather to, to pay off the debt and that's why many of them stay in these horrible conditions to ensure that they pay off their debt and then they can they can move. 
So um, that is um, those are some of the forms of um, human trafficking, and which brings us to the next to the next question. Yes, Rachel. Uh, thank you so very much. Uh, mm. thank you so very much. You really broken this down. Mm. I really didn't know that we actually have uh internal like internal trafficking i mm. didn't know in my mind i i only knew that we, we only have external trafficking but uh mm. i believe someone also has gotten to know that uh this is something that even happens around us mm. yeah it does not only happen maybe to the outside world or maybe people can people are not only trafficked that, that happens uh mm. right in our society yeah. so charlene i would i would, I would love yeah mm. Mm. that because uh this is this is really something that is happening so i would want to like help us and take us through what are some of those factors that push the women and the men to 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 be in uh, a trafficking situation and then how are people affected by this human trafficking okay um yeah so um yeah i would like to touch on that why um do people end up in situations of trafficking which we commonly know as push factors what are some of the things that push people into situations of trafficking the very first one is the most common one poverty um when people have no money when yeah push to the wall, they are looking for opportunities. And guess what? Traffickers love such people. They love vulnerability. They like to prey on such people because they're easier. I mean, if you're empowered, um, for example, you've gone to school, you have caring parents, you have a place to stay, you have food to eat. It's kind of hard for a trafficker to convince you. But given you're in a situation of um, vulnerability, you're not able to afford a meal, um, you've looked for a job for years and you're struggling, you know. These are some of the push factors um, that I've outlined here. So, yes, poverty is number one. High rates of unemployment. Uh, the other day I was watching the graduation ceremony of um, the universities, the different universities. And I think, according to New Vision, maybe 34,000 graduates were released for that particular year, last year. 34,000. And you're thinking... If that means there has to be 34,000 jobs. But the reality is those jobs are not there. So what is going to happen is going to be, the market is going to be flooded with a lot of unemployed youth. Yeah. So those are some of the things that really push people to end up saying, let me just decide and go to, let me go to Canada, Kangende, Canada. Uh, let me go to Thailand and work. So also ignorance is a big issue. Um, we're here to learn. Some of us are learning these things for the first time. And the fact that People don't even know that in their neighborhood, these girls that they're bringing in at night are being exploited. Those are some of the things um, that make people end up in situations of um, trafficking. Yesterday I was watching a documentary, which was very, very interesting, about how um, race plays a big part in um, people getting trafficked. Um, there was a documentary, the, the story was on how blacks are looked at in Libya in that Liberians, because they are they are they are light skinned, they are Arabs basically, Libyans, not Liberians. They are light skinned, so when they look at black people, they look at them as slaves, and they fight when they see there is a black person who has been brought. They fight to get him because they know that this is going to be my can. Can is an interpretation of horse in their language. This is someone who's going to work for me. So um, that's something I have no clue because this is Africa we're talking about. And just to think of the fact that we are all considered Africans and these Africans are exploiting Africans, that's also something that I learned. So also, we have a desire of quick gains. We want free things. We want, you know, quick, quick things. And these are some of the things that lead to many of the youth getting to exploitation mechanisms. They want to get free visas, free tickets. I mean, someone is offering you this, aren't you... Way to think of the back of your head, what do they want from me? That's something that we don't do many times. 
also family pressures many people are the breadwinners at home maybe you're the firstborn and everyone is depending on you and many of us survivors when they come back and they they tell us when they have been pulled out of the situation of exploitation the first thing they will tell you is i used to send money back at home every time 50000 you send even the maid when you pay her 100000 she will quickly send the 50k back at home you know those are some of the family pressures also gbv many homes which are unstable with gbv you find that the children end up in situations of trafficking like i said traffickers love vulnerability so they tend to prey on such children broken homes and so on then also peer pressure from friends when their friends who have moved from the happy village they moved from the town they born abroad they are posting pictures so many of us tend to think okay life is good and we end up into accepting to go and join them only to discover that they're on the streets struggling you know so these are some of the contributing factors to how people end up getting exploited yeah thank you so very much hey you guys uh i think everyone has gotten to know uh what causes this thing mm. and from from Charlene's conversation I've, I've gotten to know that uh these traffic these traffickers focus so much on uh the groups that are vulnerable mm. yeah for example if we, you have pressure from home mm. people need you to send money but you do not have where to get the money from yeah. so they use that if you to realize mm. those those small small things mm. are really which people are being trafficked so i want you to briefly take us through the effects how are people yet yeah, the pressure is there and of course someone will be there to go and work and you know send money home someone would want to be rich but then yet they do not know that they're going to end up in such a situation uh-huh. so how does does human trafficking affect the youth how does it affect children how does it affect women how uh-huh. does it affect us briefly yeah mm. okay yeah. um i'll briefly touch on some of the effects um mm. the most common effect is um loss of life yeah uh, we've seen these stories which are shared on the news usually i watch luganda news at around 7 pm these are some of the key stories and uh, recently we saw one of the groups i forgot in what the name is but one of the groups of the migrant workers they they formed an alliance and they were yeah. they were rioting at uh, a certain embassy i'm not so sure about the embassy but i think it was the oman embassy and they were rioting they're saying ugandans are dying abroad why why aren't you doing anything about it so the common the, the common one many people die because the situation they go through are really intense a normal human being is not supposed to go through such situations um we've seen people who have sold off their land they sell off their assets and they go abroad in the emo they need to afford an air ticket yeah. you know mm. and upon reaching there the job that they promised them of 5 million is not even there you get it so um the, the, also you end up into poverty because now when you come back you come back to zero you know many of us have ever seen us again a cutting come out seen at you know i know and, uh, mm, it's a very common thing then many of them because of the situations they get chronic illnesses um mm. they get back ache some of them into those who are in sexual exploitation which is actually for both male and female many times we think mm. when people are in sexual exploitation it's a, it's only women but for both sexes mm. we've seen mm. they you know they get these diseases stds diseases that they can't heal from and yeah those are some of the effects really and it's also it's traumatic the experience that they go through is extremely traumatic they need counseling when they come back yeah. someone tells you they used to eat with dogs that is not normal you know someone tells you they were beaten every day that is not normal they have trauma they begin to fear normal life seems is far from being normal because now the mind has been switched into survival mode and so on so those are some of the key effects so really what what happens when people get 
into situations of exploitation. Um, the fear, the embarrassment. You told people you're going to make money you're here. You're telling them you have no money. You know, it's it's know. it's really degrading to to them as human beings. Yeah. And um All because right. we have very little time left, I want to quickly share what uh some of the what some of the things that control us that we're getting into trouble. Yeah. The red flag. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let me use this opportunity to to go through them quickly. Okay. Mm. Right. Um. Yeah. So we share this information not um past time, but to ensure that at the back of our minds we're learning something, and at some point you're going to either support someone or support yourself um, when you're faced with making a decision um, when it comes to employment opportunities and so on. So, um, what are the danger signs when it comes to tip? Uh, the very first one, when you're promised high employment, you know, you high salary, rather. You, someone is promising to give you five million, you've never touched even two million, you never touched one million, even 500k. You're thinking, this is an opportunity, I can build my home, you know, I can buy my car. But the first thing you need to, to remember is, um, why is this person giving me this opportunity that is too good to be true, you know? Um, then the other one is just talking. You know, there are these people who are very good at talking. Like how someone can call you and call you on the phone. Like us, press star five, eh, star this, this is. And they're telling you, you know, in a quick, quick, quick manner. Uh, that is how traffickers also operate. They will just talk. Someone is just talking verbal deals. They don't have any documentation. They don't have an employment letter. But someone is telling you you're going to earn six million. You're going to earn ten million. You know that's also a red flag. Also, the agent giving the job is very fast at offering the job. Like I said, uh, when someone is calling you for money, that's a kind of speed. They tell you that if you don't work on your documentation within a week, we're going to throw you away. If you don't bring the six hundred thousand. We're going to move on to someone else and because of that desperation like we talked about many people don't survive being victims and then also um this the person offering a job has no office usually it's 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 a relative or a friend it's very rare for someone to be trafficked by a complete stranger it happens yes but in many cases it's someone you know a neighbor a friend so um also a red flag is there's no office. Someone is just talking and they're telling you that this is where you're going to go. Then also unclear details about the employer. They're not even telling you who you're going to work for. They're not really giving you details. So that is a red flag. And also they ask um, they ask you to use wrong unofficial routes. Um, many of the survivors who are in our care, they will tell you that when we're going to Nairobi, they told us when we got to the to the to the border they told us to get onto border borders so they helped them cross through the the mud the wetlands and you're thinking this is not this is not right ideally someone if they had information about it they would be quick to say this this is something that is wrong if they had an opportunity to learn you know and um also they use they talk to lie to the police about their documentation they usually use fake ids fake national ids fake passports fake everything fake visas issued and all that and they asked to lie about their age there are people you can see that this girl is 16 but they'll lie about it you know so some of these um the red flags that we encourage people to look out for um mm. whenever they're being offered opportunities they need to watch out to ensure that they don't end up into um situations of what of um exploitation so yeah right. that's um, much about it mm. All right. Thank you so very much, Shanine. So oh. as we are concluding this, mm. I, I just want you to advise the youth, like mm. after getting to know about the causes, the effects, mm. the danger signs, mm. what would you advise the youth? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, yeah. The first, the, the main reason why we do these teachings is to ensure that someone can identify a situation which they might be in or they might potentially be going to and this gives them an opportunity to report to maybe police and say something speak out yeah then also from from a training such as yeah. this from sharing such information we're hoping that the youth can make better decisions when they are approached by 
mm. people to give them jobs. Um, we're in an era whereby we need money, we, we need to, you know, make the situation better, but we need to be smarter as we do it. And yeah. um, with my parting shots, I would um, advise the youth to, to share information, to share what they've learned today. Don't keep quiet on it, because by sharing, you're helping someone out there who has not had an opportunity to, to, to hear about human trafficking and to make sure that we are vigilant um, within our communities. When you see something is not right, you're seeing a young girl, she's being brought there, an old man is entering the room, you know, you're probably suspecting that they're sexually exploiting her. What are you doing about it? So it's important for us to also speak up because the more you keep quiet, um, the more the traffickers continue to prey on our communities and continue to yeah. do the very thing that they shouldn't be doing, yeah? So um, I'm hoping we've learned something from this discussion. Um, this is a series that's going to continue. Today we're just touching um, the basics. Um, within the next episode, we hope to to look at the legal side of um, what trafficking in persons is, and um, we'll continue with um, with the other topics as well. Thank you. All right. Thank you so very much, Shalim. So mm -hmm. to you, our dearest viewers, I think we've learned. Let's make better decisions. Let's be smarter in the way we do things. And let, let us also share this information with others such that they can get to know. So Charlene, it's been very nice having yeah. you. Thank you so yeah. much for sparing 